Hong Kong officials have reported an alarming surge in superbug infections in the city. The number of patients diagnosed with CPE, an antibiotic-resistant bacteria, almost doubled in 2018. Experts say overcrowding at city's public hospitals are to blame for the spread of the bacteria. Most patients that carry CPE don't show signs of any symptoms. However, it can cause serious infections. Hospitals in Hong Kong have been trying to combat the spread of a range of superbugs by providing screenings and encouraging local doctors to cut back on prescribing antibiotics. The overuse and misuse of antibiotics has contributed to the rise of superbugs, which are resistant to most antibiotics. Superbugs are now a major global health threat, with drug-resistant illnesses resulting in hundreds of thousands of deaths. Now, for more analysis on this, Associate Professor Sanjaya Sananayaka, an infections disease specialist at the Australian National University Medical School, joins us uh, from Canberra. Uh, so, firstly, tell us more about this CPE bacteria and what does CPE mean and how serious is the threat of this superbug? Yes, hello. So, CPE stands for carbapenemase producing Enterobacteraceae. Now, this sounds very mysterious and complex, but if I mention the name E. coli to you, the commonest cause of urinary tract infections, then most of you will have heard that. And that's all CPE is. It's a group of common bacteria that we've all heard about that have become very resistant to a particular type of antibiotic called a carbapenem, which is usually our last line of defense against resistant antibiotics. And that's the problem because even though it's resistant to that carbapenem, you might say, well, there must be lots of other antibiotics we can use. But unfortunately, to get to the resistance to carbapenems, it's become resistant to lots of other antibiotics as well. All right, so how worried should Hong Kong... So, real... so how worried should Hong Kong officials be about this dramatic rise in cases then? Look, it's a big problem, not just in Hong Kong, around the world. It's certainly something to be worried about. At a regional level, what needs to be done by public health authorities is surveillance to try and work out which people are more, most likely to carry this bacterium and which people should be screened for it. At the hospital level, it's really important to have good infection control measures. So good levels of hand hygiene among staff in hospitals. And I noticed in one of the articles that one of the doctors there was worried about crowding. Crowding is an issue because with people with resistant bacteria, you ideally want to isolate them. You don't want someone who doesn't have the bacterium next to someone who does because that's how transmission occurs. And of course, just because you carry the bacterium, don't be scared. Nothing may happy, happen to you if it's sitting in your bowel. But if it gets into somewhere that it's not meant to, like the kidney, the bloodstream, or a surgical wound, then it's a problem. Well, help us understand then how the overuse or misuse of antibiotics plays its part with this. So definitely overuse of antibiotics at a community and a regional level drives antibiotic resistance because the bacteria are continually being exposed to antibiotics and one by one develop resistance to the antibiotics they're exposed to. And they're very clever. They can even take little packages of genetic uh, elements and pass the resistance from one bacterium to another. So that's quite frightening. Now, the other problem is that even though antibiotics are used in the human world, in the developed world, the vast majority of antibiotics are used in agriculture. So we have to make sure that the animal world, uh, vets, uh, farmers, etc., are using antibiotics appropriately. There's also contamination of wastewater by antibiotics. And antibiotics in wastewater can survive for many months to a year and cause resistance in the bacteria living in that water. So there are lots of ways that uh, we're driving antibiotic resistance. So what can be done then to combat this spread of superbugs? So at a human level, we have to educate, educate, educate. And that involves in educating consumers. So patients, so every time you have a sore throat, don't ask for antibiotics. And also uh, within the medical fraternity, to make sure that doctors only prescribe antibiotics they should. And when they do prescribe an antibiotic, it should be the narrowest spectrum of antibiotic possible, not the most 
broad because that generates a lot more resistance. And as mentioned, it's just as important that our colleagues in the agricultural world use antibiotics very carefully because also that drives resistance in the human world. We also need political will to fight this. Doctors, uh, nurses, healthcare professionals alone aren't going to solve this problem. So it was very gratifying to see in 2016 that all 192 member states of the United Nations pledged to fight antibiotic resistance. We really need that political will to bind us together and fight the good fight. Well, thank you so much, um, Associate Professor, for speaking to us. We've been speaking there with Associate Professor Sanjaya Senanayake, an infectious disease specialist at the Australian National University Medical School.